achieving the right mind frame and headspace to succeed in life can be a consequential journey for many people. And David Hernandez believes that he's developed a way to help in that journey. He's the founder of Body by Purpose and the creator of Elite Champion Fitness Academy, a company designed to equip individuals mentally and physically to reach their fullest potential and to fulfill their purpose in life. David says the strategies he teaches in fitness can be applied to everyday life. So I was thrilled when he accepted my invitation to appear this week on the program to dive into the subject in further detail. I'm Kevin McShan, a led to this conversation. Absolutely. So, David, if you're ready, I'll, I'll formally welcome you to the program, and I'm excited to learn all about your journey in the fitness industry. Great to see you uh, this morning, and thank you so very much for being here. My pleasure. Let's do this thing. Absolutely. And so, David, I know that you help people uh, reach their fullest uh, fitness potential, but you also say you do that in life life as well through mindset. So I'm wondering uh, if we can start our conversation by discussing how you help people both in fitness and in life. Absolutely. That's a great question there, Kev. You know, uh, a lot of people, when they come, they come in a place of wanting to achieve a certain goal, right? Maybe some want to lose weight, they want to build muscle, they want to get toned. And when we start working with them, a lot of the main issues when it comes to changing has to do with mindset, their beliefs, right? Their beliefs about themselves, their beliefs about what they feel they can accomplish. A lot of things that may stem from even childhood things that they're dealing with or setbacks that have happened in life that are actually holding them captive in a place of limitations, in a place of um, limiting beliefs, in a place of, of not being able to advance to get these results. What we do is we work on, you know, some of these limiting beliefs and they look at what specifically is stopping them from getting to their goals. And as we break those down, many people find the release to be able to now achieve their health and fitness goals because they've overcome these setbacks that they've had in their in their mindset right so it's uh, it's definitely an awesome journey for them to find that breakthrough to get to that place of achieving those goals Absolutely. And I know that you do this a, a couple of different ways through uh, Body by Purpose and the Elite Championship Academy. So I'm wondering right. if you can uh, dive into the details about those two ventures there, buddy. Definitely. So our Body by Purpose is basically our goal is your per your health is our purpose right that is our mission and we believe that anybody that wants to live a healthy and fit lifestyle can do that regardless of where they're at and regardless of you know their their certain experience that they might have whether it's in the fitness platform or whether it's in nutrition or whether it's in overall health right and so the elite champion fitness academy is the platform that i use to educate um, my students. And one of the things I say is that my goal isn't to boss you around and to tell you what to do. My goal is to help you to become independent with your health. What does that mean? When you understand 
why you're doing what you're doing. You understand why you're doing the nutrition strategy that you're doing. When you understand how to make adjustments with your workout program, adjustments with your nutrition, and you fully comprehend and understand how to get results, the principles that drive results in health and fitness, when you understand that, your health is now sustainable long term. So teaching you to become independent with your health is my primary objective versus trying to boss around and tell you what to do, right? So we do take an educational uh, strategy with all of the coaching that we do, which makes what I do so unique out there in this industry. And David, I know that you've been in this industry, the health and fitness industry for about 15 years now. And you pride yourself on being being able to connect with uh, a a lot of people from all different walks of life. So talk to me about the power of human connection and where your individual passion for fitness comes from. You know, that's a great story. That's a great question. And it's a, it, it's actually a story that takes me back to um, growing up, you know, growing up, I had a best friend that who struggled with obesity, and we did everything together. We played sports together, we spent weekends together. He was like one of my brothers, right? He was a brother of mine, I loved him. And his struggle really encouraged me to help him live healthy and fit. I was also a very uh, good athlete myself. So I really fell in love with the fitness side of things at a young age. And growing up, you know, he struggled with certain health issues, right? He struggled with being bullied because of his, of his body weight, because of how he looked, he was made fun of. And so After high school, we each went our separate ways. And at 21 years old, I got a phone call that unfortunately he had died of obesity. He was so desperate with getting the weight off that he went to get a gastric bypass surgery and he died two days later of an infection. So imagine, you know, my best friend now is, 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 is gone I don't have that connection with him anymore. And I felt guilty. I felt, you know, a certain um, guilt of why didn't I do more? Or maybe I could have done more to help him. And so that passion kind of birthed from there. I made a commitment that as long as I knew somebody and I loved them, I was going to avoid the situation as much as I can. So I started my journey in health and fitness. And that was my main goal, to help people to overcome their health issues to overcome limitations to overcome all of their struggles that they might be dealing with whether it was obesity whether it was diabetes whether it was you know these health issues that stem from being overweight and that's where body by purpose was birthed you know it 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 birthed out of that story and since then my mission has always been to help people get out of their situations and help them to teach them how to live a healthy and fit lifestyle because I learned that if my best friend had the tools and the understanding of how to live healthy and fit, he could have potentially avoided that mishap in his life. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so very much for uh, sharing that uh, personal and emotional story there, David. It's yeah, most appreciated. And I know that you, you also pride yourself on educating people on how they can create a general uh, uh, help for themselves by using uh, two fundamental principles. So I'm wondering if you could t- uh, talk to me about that. Yeah, totally, totally. So generational health is really, it starts with an identity shift, right? And what is generational health? I basically define it as if I can teach you how to be healthy and fit, I can change your identity and I can change your walk of life. I know I can impact your generation. So my goal and our goal as a company is to teach people how to change their identity, right? Which is a mindset identity and also change your lifestyle in terms of what you do on a regular basis, changing your habits, changing the way you think, changing your actions. Everything is everything that we do is reflected on our actions. So it starts with the thought, which then leads to a belief, which then takes us to an action. 
So my goal is to make that identity shift, that mindset identity shift happen, because if I can do that, I know not only will I change your life, will you be looking greater? Will you be healthier? Will you be fit? Will you be stronger? Will you be more toned? And all of the things that come with, you know, achieving your health and fitness goals. But I know I will impact your family. I will impact your husband, your wife. I will impact your kids your family, which will then impact your generation. Most of the issues when it comes to health and fitness stem from a lack of knowledge, from a lack of understanding, from a lack of information, proper information, right? And it always stems from our home, from our family. Look, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Mexican, right? Both my parents are Mexican. I was born in America, but our culture is very, very different, right? It's it's around uh, a culture of eating foods that aren't necessarily always the best for you, right? When we look at Mexican food, we look at tacos, we look at fried food, we look at enchiladas. There's so many foods that aren't necessarily good for you. So unfortunately, our upbringing isn't necessarily always healthy. So if I can impact you and I can change your health, I know I can potentially impact your generation which then brings us to, hence, impacting and changing your generational health. Absolutely. You know, David, I, I, I can relate to that Mexican uh, food problem because, you know, <laughs> Mexican fajitas are my thing there, David. So I, there I have you go. everything in moder- moderation, right? That's right. That's the word right there, my man. Always with that control. So that's a great point there. So tell me, David, uh, about creating a good fit, fitness habits we can be proud of. How do you think we can do that uh, as an overall society to live a healthier life? It starts by recognizing our bad habits, right? Looking at what things we are doing that are unhealthy. Anything that we do that is unhealthy is unnecessary for us. So it starts by identifying what are bad habits that I have. What habits do I have that aren't benefiting me? What habits do I have that aren't healthy, that are not leading me to a right path or to a healthy path? If we can identify the things that aren't right or that we're not doing right or that aren't necessarily beneficial for us, it gives us insight and the ability to be able to change those habits. Once we identify those things, we can then open the door to an opportunity for change. If we don't recognize or we don't accept and take responsibility that we are taking these wrong actions that are leading to these wrong habits, right? We can't open the door to change. But once we do identify that, then we can change those outcomes. Once we identify them, then we can start to incorporate these new habits. And one of the ways to incorporate or to change our habits, right, is to incorporate them with daily things that we already are accustomed to doing. So let's look at an example, Kevin. Let's say one of your goals or one of your habits you want to change is stopping from um, drinking coffee and drinking more water, right? Maybe you're drinking too much coffee. So what we want to do is not cut out coffee outright, but to introduce water in your routine of drinking coffee. So let's say in the morning you go to the coffee pot. That's the first thing you do. Well, instead of drinking coffee immediately, before you have your coffee, right, we drink water, right? So your reward for drinking water would be coffee. So if we can get ourselves into a habit of drinking water first, it is going to then help us to drink more water and increase more water, right? So incorporating the things that we want to start adopting as a habit together with things that we do on a regular basis will make it easy for us, easy for our mind to adopt these new habits. So that's a, you know, a quick little tip that we can share for your audience today. Absolutely. And David, I'm also wondering for you, personally and professionally, what's the one thing that brings the biggest smile to your face there, buddy? Wow, that's a powerful question. I love that question. It would be helping people 
to understand their own personal potential. When you're in a situation where you feel defeated, right? You feel unsatisfied. You're not completely content. You may look at yourself in the mirror and you're not happy with what you see, right? Maybe you're struggling with health issues. You don't necessarily see the good in yourself. All you see is the bad. All you see is the negative. And as humans, unfortunately, we have that tendency, right? To look at the negative over the positive. So as a coach, I focus on helping people to tap in to see their full potential. So when I start to see people go through their journey and they start to see that they can achieve these things, that they can change their mindset, that they can change their habits, they can change their life, and they start to tap into knowing what their full potential is, that's what makes me smile, my man. That's what brings joy to my life, knowing that they can see the good in them and they can see who they can become. And for you, um, celebrating your Mexican uh, heritage, tell me, what's the one, one thing that you try uh, to do on a regular basis that celebrates where you're fr from and where you came from, bud? You know, one of my biggest things growing up was looking at how hard my parents worked, right? My parents were Mexican immigrants. They came into this, to this country and fortunately, you know, they were able to become U.S. citizens and, and um, become a part of this great nation that we now live in. But one of the things that I look, that I saw from them is how hard they worked, right? They're willing to put all of their own needs aside to give us as their kids whatever we needed and it didn't matter the cost right working two jobs working long hours right um getting educated themselves while going to work while raising their kids and while providing you know for ourselves and never did i have to say i needed something in my life and i think with that the just the worth ethic that my parents brought as Mexicans to my life is what I, I, I push myself to also achieve in my day to day as, you know, as a man, as a business owner, as a coach, and as a mentor to many out there. And tell me, how do you think you'll know you, you've really made a transformational impact of your life? How do you think you'll uh, define success? You know, success is, is a unique thing. And I think success is really in the eye of the beholder, right? It's, it's all different. But for me, I think I've reached a certain level of success when I am able to impact individuals' lives to where they can message me back and say, Thank you. You've changed me. You've impacted. If I can help you, if I can impact you in one, at least one area of your life, that is a gain for me. And that's how I would define success. Consistent and continuous growth. Absolutely. And David, I'm also uh, uh, fascinated to ask you if someone wanted to uh, commission their services to write a book about your life, what do you think the title and overall message would be of your life's memoir, buddy? Wow, these are all powerful questions that I don't think I've ever sat down to really think on, Kev. Kevin. Um, I would say if they wrote a book about my life, it would be idled um overcoming and not quitting you know in 2018 i went on a missions trip to haiti and we went to go help out orphanages kids orphanages out there kids that have been you know uh, trafficked and 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 um were parents of of uh parents that were prostituted and that were saved in all of these ways right very very distressed lives that those kids lived and we went out there on a mission trip. Five days later, when I came back after a week long of uh, amazing ministry there and mission work, I was rushed to the hospital. And uh, fast forward, I was in ICU for 11 days battling for my life, right? And 
I overcame that situation, you know, with with the help of uh, my my faith and many of of those that were alongside there pushing with me. But I was given a second chance of life. And when I look at my life, it's always been a life of overcoming, but not quitting, getting back up and moving forward, getting back up and moving forward. Right. So I think if uh, if I had to really quickly think about that, it would be overcome and don't quit. Yeah, absolutely. Overcoming obstacles is uh, something that uh, I have had to do living my entire life with uh, cerebral palsy. So I can certainly relate to that. And to that end, I'm wondering your thoughts on, on how we get uh, individuals with disabilities more active and excited about fitness. You know, I it, it all comes down to meaning. I've learned that when we can identify and associate a specific meaning to everything that we do, but a meaning that has value to us, right? Something that is meaningful for us. If we can identify and understand why we want to be healthy, what are the benefits of being active? What are the benefits of living a healthy and fit life? When we understand that meaning and that value for us, it can impulse us to start striving to live a better life, right? One of the easiest ways um, that we can start incorporating the more activity is to start moving, right? In any way, right? If you're in a, if you're in, um, disabled and you have certain limitations, focusing on what can you do, right? If one of your limitations is you can't walk, you're on a wheelchair, right? Or you struggle in that area, what can we do? Can we move our arms? Can we raise our arms, right? Can we lift our legs? Can we can we move our hips? Can we sway side to side? Can we shoot a ball? Can we play sports, right? What are the things we can do versus what can't we do? So focusing on what we can do, understanding the benefits of what that would bring to your life, right? Longevity, more mobility, more um, excitement in your life, more joy will definitely help those that are disabled to start living a healthier and fit life. Yeah, and David, just before I uh, uh, ask you how people can get in contact with you, I, I'm, I'm curious to also ask you about if there was one lesson that you've learned throughout your life that you've sort of defined your own life by that you would want to pass on to the next generation, what would that be? Don't be afraid to fail. Failing doesn't make you a failure. Everything in life is about growth. It's about falling in love with process. It's about not being afraid to fail. In failure, if in, in failure, right, failing at something will always bring a lesson. There is always something to learn from failing. So when we understand that failing is good and that failing is part of growth and it's part of making us better, we can then embrace it. And the sooner we can embrace failing, the sooner we can start growing and increasing and improving and becoming better in life. Thank you for sharing uh, your wisdom in that area, David. It's most appreciated. I'm oh, finally gonna ask you, uh, if people wanna get connected with you, what's the best way they can accomplish that goal? You know, there's a couple of ways. You can uh, reach me through all of the social media platforms at uh, my handle is at Dave, K Hernandez, that's at D-A-V-E-K-H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z, at Dave K Hernandez. Um, you can also uh, reach me out through my website, www.bodybypurpose.com, bodybypurpose.com. And you can also shoot me an email, bodybypurpose at gmail.com. But obviously the best way is through social media. I think that's the, the best way that we can all communicate nowadays. So at Dave K. Hernandez.
It, it's certainly faster than email, isn't it? That's right. It sure is, Kevin. <laughs> hey, David, I really want to thank you for an in-depth discussion about the importance of fitness and how it's impacted your life. The, your time, insights, and perspectives are most appreciated, and I want to thank you. Thank you for joining me this morning. It's most appreciated. Oh. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you so much for what you're doing. I think what you're doing is phenomenal. It's an amazing platform that people can connect with. So thank you for allowing me the time. It's uh, definitely an honor and a privilege to be on your show. Keep doing what you're doing.